Moving on to the next page, I want to talk about the investment process itself. How is it that we are able to create these portfolios that Vivek just talked about, which have performed well, which have done better than index? How do we make it happen? The first step is we've got to understand what is the idea based on which we are going to say something is a good investment. All of you have hypotheses. You may have it that your good friend told you that this is going to be a good uh, stock. You saw it on a WhatsApp message uh, or even you saw it on CNBC or uh, maybe you like the name or some people believe in other kind of indicators like uh, this uh, numerology or whatever it is. But there is some hypothesis saying this is what's going to be a good investment. We take all those hypotheses as the first step and then what we do with it as the second step is back testing. Backtesting means you look at the actual historical data of last 10, 15, 20 years and see whenever this particular idea happened earlier, what was the actual return? It's not the first time if you believe that something that has gone up uh, for last two weeks will continue to go up. That's called momentum. That's a hypothesis. And you can test it. How many times has it happened that the stock has gone up for last two weeks and it then continues to go up in the third week? When you test it, you will find out is it a good hypothesis or not a good hypothesis. That's what it means to have a systematic hypothesis confirmed with backtesting in actual historical data. Once you have done that, you come to the third step, which is building an automated engine. So you combine a lot of these hypotheses which have been back tested and put it into an automated engine which is continuously scanning all the data that is available um, and then making a decision on what to buy, what to sell, when to go into a particular position. The final step is a risk layer where we look at our, our uh, uh, limits, what should be our concentration in a particular stock? What should be our concentration in a particular sector? How much should we uh, worry about the volatility of an individual stock? Some stocks have what is called high beta, which means they move a lot. They can be up 10%, they can be down 15%. Some stocks are very stable. They go up a couple of percent, go down a little percent. When you build a portfolio, you have to make sure that these are balanced. So risk management layer is also very important. Now I'm going to take you through a little bit more detail how the process works. These are the building blocks for our strategy. The first building block is called the dynamic factor combination. What that means is uh, each factor is a fancy word for saying what is your basic uh, hypothesis on something will go up or down. So if I say the price has been going up for last two weeks, that means it will go up again. That's a factor. That's momentum. If I believe that the low PE stocks will outperform because they are being valued cheaply, that's a factor. It's called the value factor. If I look at something like their cash flow or volatility or their debt to equity ratio, each one of this is a factor. They can be fundamental factor, which means they come from their financials, or they can be technical factors, which means they come from the market action that what is the volume on it? How much call or put have been put on those? What has been uh, the recent price uh, action on it? All of these together are called factors. So we put them together and we call them dynamic factor uh, combination. Dynamic means what weight is given to each factor is decided based on what is happening at that, that time in the market. I'll talk about this a little later on again. The second building block is index reconstitution. Index in itself is a very important market uh, demand driver. Why? Because many large investors get exposure based on index. They simply buy nifty you know, Nifty as a product is as a derivative, as a, as a future is a huge market. So a lot of people take market position based on the whole index, which in turn has an impact on the demand for everything that is part of that index, like Nifty 50 or Sensex or Next 50 or BSC NSE 500. All of these have their own constituents. And whenever there is an, uh, a stock enters an index, or leaves an index, it makes a big difference to its demand in the marketplace. 
The next building block is institutional holding. Uh, all of uh, us know that there are lots and lots of very, very smart and large investors in the market. What if we were able to understand what is being bought by different investors at a given time? Of course, we hear about it on CNBC all the time. Such and such large investor has bought this stock or this is the action they are doing. We do it at scale. We look at every mutual fund. We look at foreign institutional holdings. We try to understand what is it that they are buying? What is it that they are selling? And we aggregate all of that information to give us a sense of what is the demand from institutions for each of the stocks that we are evaluating. The next building block is the sector industry rotation. As you would know, given what's happening in the economy, uh, certain sectors or industries will do well. Sometimes we have a belief, uh, depending on where the rupee dollar is, that the export-led sectors will do very well. Sometimes we have a belief if the agriculture, for example, uh, is doing very well, that the consumption sector will do well because people will have a lot of money, they'd be able to buy things. Or the infrastructure sector, or telecom, or commodity-led sector. So depending on what's happening in the macroeconomic environment, certain sectors or industries can do well. We look at the factors which may impact each of the sectors and then try to decide how we should position our portfolio. Now, this is independent of what we think of individual company. When the whole sector does well, each company will have some positive benefit from it. So we look at this sector factors independent of what we do with the individual company factor. The last building block is market microstructure. Here we are trying to understand what is actually happening uh, with things like uh, when something goes in ban, something is um, uh, being uh, demand and supply, uh, the how its various products are uh, performing, whether it's in the derivative uh, segment or other segment. We put it all together in this um, uh, bucket called my market microstructure, which understands the actual trading activity and product activity on individual stock. When we put all of this together, we come up with over 130 micro strategies. Now, each strategy here in itself could be a viable investment method itself. For example, there are lots of uh, funds and strategies out there which simply do momentum investing. That would be one of the strategies for us or it could be value-based investing, which would be one of the strategies for us. So we have built 130 of these micro strategies across these building blocks, and we put them all together. And then the next step for us is to combine them and, uh, uh, and then build a multi-library signal, which we are trying to prior prioritize which of the regime uh, is there in the market today, and therefore, which of these signals should be given what weight? This is um, the method by which we take these building blocks, 130 micro signals, and put them together into a single portfolio. So the regime estimator is important. That's about nine factors on where the economy is. What is our inflation rate? What is the US dollar rupee rate? What is happening with the oil prices? Um, what's happening with the trade imbalance or interest rate uh, curve structure. All of these give us an indication of what regime we are operating in. When we uh, look at that, we are able to get the portfolio and put it into the good luck portfolio. Now, um, the risk element that I talked about also comes into play at this stage where we are obviously putting limits. You know, what is our single stock concentration? What is our... Um, sector concentration that we are going to allow and what is our overall volatility expectation so we are not putting a lot of volatile stocks into the portfolio as we build the overall um, composition of the portfolio hopefully that has given you um, an overall sense of how our methodology works in terms of creating a science-based method of investing we do not have any process in which we follow tips. We do not try to incorporate things like, um, you know, uh, what a management interview would do. What is our gut feeling about what would be the talent of this uh, company? 
we focus on things which we can systematically study over many years and then decide whether we are going to use that in terms of determining whether to invest or not.